Hey everybody, welcome back to World History. So we're doing two sections today. We'll be doing 18.2 and 18.3. So go ahead and get your notes out and let's get started. So once again, I'm gonna move my little bubble up here. So again, um, we'll have a bunch of these terms and definitions for today. So if you wanna just go ahead and take a minute, fill those out. Here's a nice slide of that. So our essential question for section two is what political and social reforms did the National Assembly Institute in the first stage of the French Revolution? Well, the members of the National Assembly voted to end their own privileges after the storming of the Bastille <clears throat> and from providing equal rights to all male citizens before the law to the abolishment of their exclusion from taxes the National Assembly aimed to change an unjust system and make things better for the people of France. So the historians have divided the, the period of the French Revolution into four different phases. We're still in phase one with the National Assembly at this point. France became a constitutional monarchy. By the time we hit section three, we'll be in the reign of terror or radical phase with escalating violence and we'll see the end of the French monarchy. Then we will have a period of reaction against extremism known as the Directory, and then we'll end with the age of Napoleon, or a consolidation of many changes and a period of war throughout Europe. Really, the Reign of Terror will be Section 3, and then the Directory and Age of Napoleon will be, for the most part, end of Section 3 and all of Section 4. So the political crisis of 1789 that we talked about last section in France actually coincided with the worst famine in memory at the time. Rumors were rampant and created panic. During this period, it was known as the Great Fear. Peasants believed that government troops were seizing their crops to feed the nobility. And believing the nobles were trying to reinstate medieval dues, peasants are going to steal grain and set fire to old manor records in an attempt to just escape the crushing amount of debt they've been in for decades at this point. Although the violence will eventually die down, peasant anger against the Anshan regime remained really high, and it's really going to influence a lot of the events that we'll talk about later on today in notes and with Section 3 as well. So in Paris, the revolutionary center of France, several factions competed for power. We had the National Guard, which was more moderate, led by the Marquis de Lafayette, who, if you remember from Hamilton and uh, the American Revolution, was a major French leader involved in the American Revolution. And this was mainly a middle-class militia designed mainly to keep order and make it so the ideas of the revolution would actually be accepted and followed. Then you have the Paris Commune on the other side, and they're a lot more radical. They want to replace the royalist government of Paris, and they mobilized violent action for the sake of the revolution, just for the sake of wanting to get rid of everything old and in with the new. Now, the National Assembly is going to react to the uprisings and vote to end the privileges of the nobility. The nobility is going to give up their manorial dues and exclusive hunting rights, so no longer do they have access to the specific beautiful bit of land for them to hunt on. Now everybody can hunt on there. Nobles also ended their special legal status and their exemptions from paying taxes. So with this, the assembly enacted the equality of all male citizens before the law. Sorry, ladies, it doesn't apply to you. Now, by the end of August 1789, the National Assembly issued the Declaration of the Rights of Man and the Citizen. It was modeled after the American Declaration of Independence, and it announced free and equal rights for all men, natural rights for all men, equality before the law for all men, freedom of religion for all citizens that are men, and taxes, level, taxes levied fairly for all citizens that are men. Again, this was all meant for men, mostly. Now, the Declaration of the Rights of Man did not please everyone. Women, such as Olympe de Gauche, called for equal citizenship for women. And Louis XVI did not want to accept the reforms of the National Assembly either. So really, you have two major groups that were against a lot of these ideas. But again, the Declaration of the Rights of Man is actually a really huge thing because it identifies the French people's rights. Now, some 6,000 women are going to march on Versailles in October of that same year. And they were angry about the famine and resented Queen Marie Antoinette, who lived a life of luxury, you know, the let-them-eat-cake lady. 
and they demanded to see the king. The women brought the king and queen to Paris, where they lived as essentially prisoners. Yes, that's right, folks. 6,000 women marched on the palace, captured the king and queen, and took them back to Paris. Talk about a turn of events. Now, the National Assembly is also going to place the church under state control. It dissolved a lot of convents and monasteries. It ended the papal authority over the French church. And the civil constitution of the clergy made bishops and priests elected salaried officials by the French government. This move was extremely condemned by the Pope and many bishops and priests and a large number of French peasants. They didn't like this regulation to their religion. They saw that as the government going too far. Now, the National Assembly will produce the Constitution of 1791 to set up a limited monarchy. The new Legislative Assembly had the power to make laws, collect taxes, and decide on issues of war and peace. Moderate reformers considered that the con this Constitution of 1791 completed the French Revolution. Oh, how wrong they were. So, at the time of the creation of this Constitution, Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette attempt to escape France. To many, this attempt meant that Louis was a traitor to the revolution. Now, the Emperor of Austria and King of Prussia signed the Declaration of Pilnitz, supporting Louis and threatening to intervene if things got bad. And as French immigrants spread fear of the revolution to other nations, France prepared for war. Stuff was about to go down. And it doesn't help that within this, the Legislative Assembly, the sans culottes and the Jacobins are pushing the revolution to a more radical action. The sans culottes and demanded a republic and an end to the monarchy. The Jacobins then gain the upper hand in the Legislative Assembly and declare war on Austria, Prussia, Britain, and other states in Europe. Fighting will begin in 1792 and last on and off until 1815. This decision is going to make it so France is essentially the aggravated, the aggressor in wars for the next two decades. So, moving on to section three. Again, we got a couple more slides of definitions and whatnot. Um, if you're in class on this day, this is the day the guillotine will be here. You may have seen pictures of your classmates being put in the guillotine and me chopping their heads off. Do, 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 do. All right, so our central question for section three. What events occurred during the radical phase of the revolution? Initially, the monarchy was abolished and a republic was established, and war will continue throughout Europe. After the radicals gained control, those who were against the revolution were subject to arrest or execution. Thousands, including the king and queen, were beheaded at the guillotine. So we're still in 1792. The war abroad is going pretty badly for the French. Um, many revolutionaries believe that the king was in league with these foreign powers to retain his own power. And as a result, citizens are going to attack the palace where the king was held. Um, the king and his family actually escape their palace and escape to the legislative assembly. Citizens are also going to attack prisons that held nobles and priests. These tensions are going to lead to increasing violence in France. This is the beginning of the transition from the era of the Legislative Assembly and the National Assembly, the more moderate form of the revolution, to transition to the more radical portion of the revolution. So the radicals take control of the Legislative Assembly and call for the election of a new legislative body, the National Convention. In this, they'll extend suffrage or voting rights to all male citizens, and they'll seize noble lands. In addition, the monarchy will be abolished in favor of the creation of a republic. So now the monarchy is officially completely gone. The National Convention is then going to put Louis XVI on trial as a traitor to France. And he will be sentenced to death. And in January of 1793, off with his head, with the guillotine. And just nine months later, in October, his wife, Marie Antoinette, will also be beheaded. By 1793, France faced external and internal threats. In terms of external friend, uh, threats, war continued with the Netherlands, Spain, Britain, and Prussia. Internally, um, royalists and priests are going to lead rebellions against the government, and the sans-culottes are going to demand relief from food shortages and inflation. 
The convention was then divided between the Jacobins and the Girondins, another political group within the government. As a result, the convention is going to create the Committee of Public Safety to deal with these issues. But it's not going to be much better. Now, the National Convention gra granted the Committee of Public Safety absolute power to save the revolution. At war, the French armies overran the Netherlands and invaded Italy. And at home, France battled counter-revolutionaries through the use of terror. We are now beginning the period known as the Reign of Terror. Under the leadership of Maximilien Robespierre, um, the Committee of Public Safety followed Robespierre's ideas. He was a reformer, but also supported the terror as a way to maintain order. He's going to promote religious tolerance, try to abolish slavery, and arrest and try all those who threaten the revolution. During this period, nearly 300,000 people will be arrested and 17,000 will be executed by guillotine for opposing the revolution. The reign of terror is going to continue until Robespierre himself will be executed via the guillotine in 1794. At 17,000 executed, that is in a year and a half, from 17, January 1793 until 1794. In reaction to the reign of terror, moderates are going to produce a new constitution, the Constitution of 1795, which established the Directory, which was a five-man directory and a two-house legislature. The Directory made peace with Prussia and Spain, but continued the wars with Austria and Great Britain because they thought that they might have a chance of winning. And they're going to create a constitutional monarchy. The Directory was corrupt and did not solve problems such as rising bread prices, so once again, more bread riots! Yay! They also appointed Napoleon Bonaparte, a popular military hero, to rule France. We'll talk more about Napoleon next section, actually. By 1799, hold that thought, I'll be right back. Sorry about that, I got mail. And no, I'm not going to do the mail song from Blue's Clues. No, not going to happen. So by 1799, France had changed dramatically from the country of Louis XVI and his court. The term citizen applied to people of all social classes. Elaborate fashions gave way to more simple clothing. Nationalism will rise throughout France. Again, this is the belief and support of one's nation. And troops in Marseille, this is a port city in southern France, are going to march to a rousing song that would later become the French national anthem. State schools are going to replace religious ones, and social systems were organized to help the poor, the elderly, and war widows. So, actually, some good stuff. So, that is it for notes for today. Here, let me move my little bubble down here so you can see me. Uh, you do have an assignment today. It is the Shag Reign of Terror reading packet. It is on Google Classroom. You're only answering the questions on the answer sheet. I will see you all next time. Bye, everyone.